Hey fam, deep and inspiration happy yes. So as promised, today I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up the X protocol Zadia node on a VPS server. I'm pretty happy with the X protocol team because they have a very, very detailed guide on how you can set a node on a VPS server, or specifically talking about Linux operating systems. Now, I also want to mention that if working with Linux and setting up a node on a VPS and stuff like that gets overwhelming for you, you can also delegate your node with NodeOps. So as a NAS service provider, they're basically going to take care of everything that has to do with the node management for you so that you do not have to do so eventually after the setup i'm going to keep running my node with nodeops so currently you can see this is my node that i set up yesterday running flawlessly with nodeops i find it a bit more comfortable but what i always do is to present all the options to you so that you can decide on which option you want to go for now to begin what we're going to have to pay attention to is the requirements from running the node so currently we are going to be working with a linux operating system the hardware requirements are pretty low so you have 4 gigabyte of ram 2 cpu cores, 60 gigabyte of disk space and x86 or x64 processor and basically a stable internet connection now the first thing that we're going to have to do is to get a vps server or to get a vps provider so typically i look at all the vps providers out there contabo still remains my favorite because you have a very good price to hardware specification ratio now if you look at the requirements that they have we're going to go with a contabo cloud vps one option which gives you four cpu cores, six gigabyte of ram 400 gigabyte of ssd which is way more sufficient to run the x protocol zadia node now if you do have a powerful vps as well you could also save money and basically add this node as well to the same vps so long as the hardware specifications of your vps can support this now if you already have a vps you can skip this section and go directly to where i'm going to be installing the node but if you do not have a vps i'm going to take you to a systematic guide on how you can order one so here i'm going to put my referral link to contabo in the description section when you click on my referral link it's going to bring you directly to this page and i'm going to take you to a systematic process on the options that you have to choose to place the order now for the duration you can can choose whatever duration that you want to go for starting from one month all the way to 12 months you would end up paying the one-time fee my tip for you is that if you're not really sure if the vps approach is going to be the best for you my tip for you would be that you go for the one month option test things out if you realize that it's something that you want to proceed with you can basically keep your subscription running if eventually you realize that vps is too complicated for me and for instance i want to move to nodeops then you basically can cancel your vps subscription anytime now in terms of the region we're going to leave this as european union the storage time Type, please choose a 400 gigabyte ssd currently they are also doing an offer that you can take the 600 gigabyte ssd and here you see that it's completely free so why not you can also go with the 600 gigabyte ssd you do not need to choose these 100 gigabyte nvme and 150 because it's a very very high read write speed that we do not need for the server if you go with a 600 gigabyte for instance which is free here you get more space that you can also run other nodes on the vps server now for the operating system i'm going to recommend that you go with ubuntu 22.04 so that's what you're going to choose here and then when you come here you you're going to have to fill in the credentials for your vps server so the username is always going to be root password is going to be the password that you're going to use when you are connecting to the vps server now this password is very very important so make sure that you save this in the secure location if you lose the password you basically lose access to the vps server and would have to reset your server completely now beyond this point object storage networking add-ons you do not need to choose anything you can basically go to the next stage where you can either create an account or log into your existing contable account make the payment and after that you're going to receive a confirmation email now after placing your order within a few minutes sometimes it could take an hour or two you're basically going to receive an email from contable that looks like this mine is in german but the layout is going to be technically the same irrespective of which language yours is going to be in now in this email the only thing that we're going to need is the ip address of your vps server because this is the ip address that you're going to need when you are connecting to the vps server the username is going to be always root so to repeat from this email the only thing that you need is technically the ip address and the username which is always root so now that you have bought a vps server the next stage is basically to connect to the vps server there are several applications that you can use to connect to the server my personal favorite is always either putty or you can also use the bit device ssh client what i'm going to do today i'm going to teach you how to use the putty application whether you're using windows operating system or mac operating system both come with inbuilt applications that can also allow you to connect to the vps server for instance if you're using windows there's an application that is called windows powershell if you're using mac there's an application that is called terminal and all these applications can enable you to connect to the vps 
itself. I'm going to show you shortly how you can do all of this. So if you want to use Putsi, just come here, click on download Putsi. And then when you scroll down here, you see that there are several versions of the application. There is a 64-bit processor type. There is an ARM processor type. Basically, just download the one that fits with your operating system. When you install the Putsi application and launches for the first time, this is how it's going to look. If you want to connect to the VPS server, just come to the host name option here. Type root. Root is the username that we got from the email from Contabo. And then type at and then paste in the IP address of your VPS server. Now, when you do this, that's it. Just come down here and click on open. So if you are connecting to the VPS server for the first time, Putty is going to ask you to accept the connection. If you are pretty sure you're connecting to the right server, just click accept and then you basically be brought to the same console that you see here. Now, in this section here, you're going to put in the password. My tip is that with Putty or with most of the VPS applications, you do not see whatever they are typing when you are typing the password. So you can always type the password somewhere in Notepad, copy the password, come into the console. When you right click in Putty, it basically paste whatever that you have in the clipboard and then just press enter so i made a mistake i'm going to paste it again and i'm going to press enter and then now you can see that i'm connected to my contabo server now i'm going to teach you another application that you can use to connect to the vps server using the inbuilt windows application now the process is going to be the same if you're using micro operating system but in mac the application that you're going to use is called terminal now just click on the start button and open an application that is called windows powershell so this is how windows powershell looks here just type ssh space root root is going to be the same same username that we copied we saw initially from Contabo or that we also use in Putsi at and then here type in the IP address of your VPS server and after that just press enter now if you're connecting this for the first time PowerShell is going to ask you if you're sure you want to connect to this just type yes and press enter and then here you're going to put in the password of your VPS server so to paste here as well, like I said, just right click on the console and then press enter. And you can see here that I'm connected to the Contabo server. It looks exactly the same whether I'm using the Putty application or whether you're using Windows PowerShell. Because I work with Putty most of the time, I'm going to continue with the tutorial using the Putty application. Now to start with the installation, I have a Medium post where I outline all the commands that we're going to use so that you do not have to type this singly. I'm also going to provide a Medium post in the description section. So just click on it and it's basically going to bring you to the guide that you see here. Now we have done all the things that has to do with the VPS server. So you can basically skip through all this option and start with step one. What we're going to do is we're going to update the system packages. Let's copy this command, come into the console, right click and then press enter. Okay, so this is done. The next thing that we're going to need is we're going to install the screen application. So just copy this here come into the console paste in this in my case i've already installed the screen so it wouldn't install it again but i can still press enter so that you see how this works so you can see that in my case i have the application already running that's why i didn't need to do this now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to download the zadia node application so come here copy this one here now here it's very important that you make sure that you're using the right version of the application when you scroll down to my guide i also provided the official guide from x protocol so when you open this guide here the guide is always going to show you the most recent version of the application so when you come here you should find the latest version of the application if it happens that this guide here is not updated when you come to the export to call docs come to this section here under zardian notes come to install app software then click here to download or to find the original application so when i open this here it would basically open github so if you want to find the latest version of the application so come to the section here under cli guide so it stays here for advanced users when you come here and find line Linux x86 or 64. If you are running on the VPS server, the server that I'm teaching you, this is going to be the version that you're going to use. Just right click here and choose copy link address. And then when you come into the console, just type wget space and then paste in the address. So this is typically always going to get to the latest version of the software. So in my case, for instance, I see that it's a short difference. So in this case, it's called a v002. And then when I use the wget command, I do not see this v002. I'm not very sure which one is the right one, but because the official docs has this version here, I'm going to proceed with the installation using that. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come into the console. I'm going to paste this and I'm going to press enter. Now what is just that is that it downloaded the Zadia node application. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the CLI application that we downloaded executable. So when I type ls in my console, you see that I have a file that is called runner.linux.amd64 and this is the application that we're going to run. Now to make it executable, just copy this command here, come into the console, paste this and then press enter. So now the command the application is executable. What I personally like to do is that I like to run my notes in a screen session. Now to do so, just copy this command here. What this command means is that create a screen that is called Zadian. You can think of a screen like a session 
within which you can run an application. It makes it very easy, for instance, if you want to run multiple applications all on the same server. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to come into the console. I'm going to paste this and I'm going to press enter. So you can see that it clears everything and creates a new space. So that means that I'm going to run my application in a completely new space. Now to run the Zadia Note application, you can copy this command here and then paste this in the console and then press enter. So you can see that the reason why we do this is that it tells you all the commands that are available. So you can use Zadian delegates, Zadian completion, Zadian help, Zadian run. Now what we're going to do is we're going to initiate the delegation process. Now to do so, copy this command here in step seven, come into the console, paste the command and then press enter. Now what you see here is that a unique URL has been assigned to me. When you come to generating new wallets for creating node, you see that it says now go to this URL here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this URL here. Now in Putty, whenever you highlight anything with your mouse, it basically copies it in the clipboard. So I have copied this. What I'm going to do now is to go into my browser and we're going to continue with the delegation process. Now, after you put the URL in your browser, it's basically going to bring you to this page. So, so on this page, what you're going to do is you're going to connect your wallet to the node that we created on the VPS server. Now to do so, just click on connect wallet here and connect to the wallet that contains your Zadia node NFT. So now I have connected my wallet and what I'm going to do next is to bind my wallet to the Zadia node. Now everything here is taking place on the base network. So make sure that you do have a little bit of ETH to cover for the gas fees. If you do not have any ETH on the base network on that wallet, it's not going to work. So to do so, what I'm going to do is I just click on assign wallet to Zadian and then I'm going to confirm the transaction. And then now I get a confirmation transaction completed. Please return to the Zadian app, enter the public wallet address to continue. So I'm just going to copy the public wallet address and I'm going to keep it in a save location. So as it states here, we've done the delegation, do the delegation, return here and enter your public address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the public address that was generated for us and I'm going to press enter. And then now you can see that the process was successful. So it says that delegation is successful. Please remember to send base it for gas fees to, to this address here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this address here and I'm going to send a little bit of it to this particular address. And then here, remember that everything is going to be on the base network. So make sure that you're sending the funds to this address through your base network. So I'm going to come back to my wallet. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the base network. I'm going to click send. I'm going to paste in the wallet address that we just copied. And I'm going to send just a little bit of it. So I don't want to spend too much. I'm going to spend, let's say here, I'm going to send this much, let's say $5 to this. And I'm going to click continue and I'm going to confirm the transaction. So now the transaction is pending. I'm just going to wait for this to go through. So now this is done. We're going to now continue with the setup process. Hey, I'm going to take a pause here. If you do find value in what I'm doing, please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything special, but it goes to support my channel so that I can come with high quality tutorials like I'm doing here for you. I'm going to give you three seconds to do that and then we're going to continue with the process okay so if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thanks so much for doing so this goes to support my channel now what are we going to do now is we have sent funds to the wallet that was created for us we're now going to start a node now to start a node just copy this command here come into the console paste in the command and then just press enter so basically that's it the node is now running what i always recommend is that before you close your putty application always minimize the screen now you can do so by pressing Ctrl A, leave the keyboard and press D. And what this does is that it minimizes the screen for you so that you can, so that you don't mistakenly put in any command that would basically kill the application. Now, if you want to get back into the screen, you can use this command here, screen minus R Zadian. What this basically means is that it should restore the screen that was called Zadian. If you use any other name instead of Zadian, just basically raise the Zadian name and put whatever name that you called your screen. Now, after some time that your node has been running, if you get back into your node, you're gonna see a screen that is similar to mine. You can see that it says, for instance, info, rewards, claims successfully, and the transaction hash and stuff like that. So when you see something like this, it basically means that your node is up and running. If you do not see this immediately, you run this, just leave the node to run up for some time, and you will start to see some confirmation like this. Now I'm going to show you another way that you can also basically see the kick tokens that you have been receiving by running your node. Now just come to Basecan, everything on the X protocol is on the base network. So just come to Basecan and then put in your wallet address here and click the search button. And when you do so, it basically loads your wallet showing all the transactions that has been taking place. Now come to the token holdings part. And then here you can see in my case, I have this X kick tokens and I have 1800 tokens so far. When you click on this, by the way, 
what you also see here is my Znode license NFT. Now, when I click on the SKIC token, you can see here all the transactions that are going on in my wallet. So the rewards are coming in periodically. It appears that it's about three times or so every hour, but you can see this basically when you come to the base scan. So when you see this as well, it's also a confirmation that your node delegation process or your node setup was successful. Now you can also directly add the kick token to your MetaMask wallet so that you can see your kick rewards directly on your wallet. Now to do so, you're gonna need the kick token contract address. I personally always prefer to come to the official docs to copy the contract address. So here you can see the contract address is the third one that we have here. So I'm just gonna copy this one here. And then we're gonna go to MetaMask and we're gonna import this token. Now to import the token, just open MetaMask and then down here come to import token come to custom token and just paste in the contract address of your token and here you can see that it directly automatically detects the token now here be extremely careful a lot of people are scamming people out there so make sure that you copy the contract address from the original source now after this just click on next and then import and then you see that i directly see how many tokens that i have which is 1800 kick tokens in my case now as always what i always advise is that before you leave the console just minimize the screen by pressing Ctrl A and D. And that's it for this video. If you do have any questions, please put us in the comment section. You can also join my Discord channel where we basically help the community out there with any problems that they would have in setting up their notes or also talking about new deep projects that are out there. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye.